Shields up, Iron Breakers. We're kind of here coming at you with another video. Welcome back to Monster Hunter World. And today I'm going to be bringing you guys another one of my builds. This time around, we're going to be going for a Switch Axe build. And the reason I'm doing a Switch Axe build is because I kind of feel like I never really gave it a fair shake after the beta. Like, I played the crap out of the Switch Axe during the beta. And then I just kind of it dropped off my radar. I went after the Gun Lance and the Charge Blade and kind of stuck with those weapons most of the time. So, I decided that I would look into another Switch Axe. And as I was doing Doing that in a live stream one of you guys the iron breakers actually said rurikon you should check out uh the lunastra switch axes because they're really good and i looked into it and i was like you know what let's go ahead and craft the empress axe sticks because it's got white sharpness it's got razor uh, razor sharp spare shot on it and to top it off uh it also comes with two tier three decoration slots thus increasing the versatility of any build that you do around this particular switch axe by quite a bit and therefore i really enjoyed it and i decided to do a build around it so the augmentation that we have on it is health regen because you guys know i'm lazy i don't like having to waste time healing myself and uh yeah that's what we went with also we got uh white sharpness white sharpness is so good and with that slow sharpness decrease it just becomes like a beast of weapon to top it off we're also going to be using a sharp decoration which is going to increase that white sharpness even more so let's get into it on the weapon itself the empress axe sticks we got two mighty jewels and i understand maybe not everyone's going to have mighty jewels although i have to be honest i've i've pretty much uh, melded so many mighty jewels that I don't think it's that hard to get a mighty jewel if you play enough at least in my opinion but anyways got two mighty jewels on the empress axe sticks with the health regen augmentation then moving on downwards we have an empress crown beta the main reason for this is because as I told you guys a while back uh, it's it's very hard to play switch axe in my opinion without a vid extender like the damn skill seems like it was a, like a, a must-have for a switch axe build because if you can't dodge that much you're gonna have troubles uh surviving certain monster encounters then on that empress crown beta we got mighty jewel 2 as well as a tenderizer jewel 2 because we are going to be going for weakness exploit then we got cold to roth's ire alpha this is going to be bringing us two critical boost as well as two stun resistance and i figured hey if we got two stun resistance why not just go for full stun resistance and be stun immune because we're gonna have spare slots anyways might as well go for that so we went for the steadfast jewel thus making us immune to stuns and with this piece we also have two critical boost on top of that which is going to come in very nicely on top of the maximum might Moving on, we've got Diablos Nero Bracers. Now, the reasoning for this, because I want that focus, and the Diablos Nero Bracers also have some really, really good uh, decoration slots. Not the best. We have better now. But the Diablo Nero Bracers also come with focus included. And I know that focus is an extremely rare decoration. Therefore, I wanted to have focus on this set, and I didn't want it to use decorations so that this is achievable by some people at least. So we got a sharp jewel in there, like I said, because we are going to be spreading, uh, we're going to be extending the duration of the white sharp as much as we can. We got a satiated jewel in there because I had a fair slot, so I figured, you know, might as well go for that. You can swap in anything else that you want on there. Then we got Nergigante Coil Beta. Uh, this is going to bring in two attack boosts. We're going to be going for four attack boosts to get that nice 5% affinity on top of everything else. And uh, on there, we're going to be putting Critical Jewel because that is going to max out our Critical Boost. So we're going to have Maximum Might uh, Level 3 as well as Critical Boost Level 3. We're going to have some pretty decent affinity on top of this. And then we got Dante's Leather Boots bringing in that Level 2 Weakness Exploit, which is going to stack with the decoration that we already had. And we're going to socket them with two Attack Jewels. Now, I understand not everybody has two Attack Jewels. Can't help you there. If you don't have two attack jewels, you're going to be missing out on 5% affinity. Can't really do anything about that. But anyway, we then wrap things up with a focus charm 2, which is going to give us the additional two points of focus. Looking at the finalized build, we got attack boost level 4, stun resistance level 3, critical boost level 3, weakness exploit level 3, focus level 3, maximum might level 3, evade extender level 2, free meal level 1, protective polish level 1, and razor sharp spare shot. Now, the one thing in there that you guys might be wondering about is, Rurikon, what's the deal with the focus? And the focus gets you both into amped state as well as a charge 
charges the uh, the gauge to go into sword mode a whole lot faster. That's the reason why we got focus in there. And at that point, you guys might be wondering, okay, Rurikan, so why not power prolonger? It's because I didn't feel the benefit of power prolonger as much as I did for focus, and I wanted to have all of those offensive stats to make this very much an all-round build. Because as you guys notice, I'm not really going after the uh, the blast element of the the weapon because I kind of feel like sure you can get maybe one or two additional blast procs, but I. I would rather go for additional damage regardless of the monster's weakness. So you'll get your blast procs every now and then. Maybe not as much as if you had the uh, the, the increased chance, but still, you're going to get some blast procs and to top it off, you're also going to have a bunch of damage. Now, the interesting thing about this build is that in neutral, and what that means is just like whenever your stamina is full and you're not really under any debuff or buff, you're going to have 45% affinity, which if you are attacking weak spots as you should to the best of your ability you're sitting on 95 percent affinity with white sharpness that is a whole lot of damage and i know you guys are going to look at the gameplay and it's like oh it doesn't really seem like that much damage the monsters seem to be doing fine or maybe not i don't know depending on how the footage goes but this is the throne taker event okay remember these are tempered beasts they hurt like hell and i don't have that much practice with switch axe having said that though i feel that this switch axe build is super solid like the very first time i tested it out on a tempered nergigante good god i damn near felt sorry for the damn thing it got exploded and destroyed so friggin' hard now when it comes to uh tools for this particular uh mantle i would advise you guys to take rock steady mantle as well as temporal mantle the reasoning behind that is because one of my main complaints when it comes to the Switch Axe, and one of the reasons why I fell off of Switch Axe so hard after the beta, is because of the way Zero Sum Discharge works. Because Zero Sum Discharge, which is like the ultimate ability of the Switch Axe, what it does is it attaches you to the monster, which is cool, it's a really cool move, you can pull it off and you attach yourself to the monster, deal a bunch of damage, charge up, explode in its face, nice. Real cool, I love that move. Unfortunately, it is not a move that you get to do as often as I would like because it leaves you in a really vulnerable state. Certain monsters can actually roar you off of them despite the fact that you have level four earplugs whenever you're uh, doing zero sum discharge. A lot of the later game monsters will actually still roar you off of them because you don't have level five earplugs. So you can get roared off and not only that, but certain attacks that the monsters do can also hit you while you're in zero sum discharge discharge effectively nullifying the attack that's where the rock steady mantle and the temporal mantle comes in if you have the temporal mantle you don't have to worry about damage at all just like mount the monster zero sum discharge have at it have fun good times because you will automatically dodge anything he does and if you got rock steady mantle just pay attention to your health so long as you have enough health you can mount the monster he's not going to be able to knock you off if however you don't have that much health you might not want to do zero sum discharge at that point but either way rock steady mantle will allow you to do it without getting dismounted that's why i like those two mantles quite a bit even though in the footage that you're watching i'm actually not using those two mantles i'm using fireproof mantle and temporal mantle because we're fighting a friggin lunastra and a teostra okay it's the throne taker quest so fireproof mantle definitely beats out rock steady mantle in that particular scenario but either way that is also where health regen comes into play due to the fact that you might take some damage when you are doing your zero sum discharge health regen helps offset that a little bit Hopefully this is a build that you guys will enjoy moving forward. I personally enjoy it quite a bit. Try it out. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. And I know some of you guys are wearing Ruricon. You haven't been posting as consistently. I've been dealing with a bit of a health issue, which is nothing to concern yourselves about. It's just something that I've had to deal with over the past couple of days. And I've also been focusing a lot of effort on live streaming. So make sure that you check me out on twitch.tv slash once again, thank you guys very much for watching. As per usual, comments and feedback in the comment section below. I really appreciate the discussions I have with you guys. Uh, Moss Hunter World for the PC is almost here. I can, I bet all of you PC guys that have been waiting guys can basically taste the game right now, which uh, it's, it's going to be good times, you guys. going to be good times. The wait is going to be well worth it is all I can tell you. 
Once again, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you enjoy my videos, subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you actually get notified of all of my future videos. There's two video suggestions on screen right now that you guys can check out uh, if you want to. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.